Hello YouTubers, RVers, and fellow hams. Well, this is update video number two. Uh, a little late, and I apologize for that. I, uh, it's been so busy. I've been working, working, working every day, wearing myself out, but uh, making progress. Um, last week, a uh, major thing last week was the mechanical work. Uh, we uh, took it into the shop. Has new brakes all the way around. The old brakes were in real bad shape. Uh, that included uh, special seals on the rear. They have floating wheel bearings, and the differential fluid is shared with the wheel bearing, I guess. And those seals had worn. So, yeah, new calipers, new pads, new shoes, new drums, and new rotors all the way around. <laughs> it was in bad shape on the brakes. And fluid changes, oil changes, uh, cooling system flushed, automatic transmission flushed. Um, you know, a lot of lot of basic stuff. To the tune of $2,500, which ate up about 70% of my remaining budget. So, getting a little tight, but uh, I think I've got enough to still get the uh, liquid rubber to seal the roof and the batteries for the solar system, which are the two major purchases left. Uh, so anyway, uh, what else have I been doing? While it was in the shop, I went down to the bench and built a couple of things that I needed to get built for uh, the project. Um, needed to get, uh, I got one more thing to build. Uh, I needed to get these done so I could start packing up the tools and uh, sorting through the parts and putting those in totes. Uh, that's a big job. Uh, so let's go uh, to a film segment. I uh, filmed some of the work and what I built and I'll show you that. Well, I'm down here at the very messy bench, which is in the process of organizing and, <laughs> and uh, cleaning and uh, sorting through parts and connectors and things getting stuff packed up to put in the RV, but I was also uh, removing the remaining coaxial runs and antennas today. I took the backyard vertical down yesterday, and one thing I know a lot of people are going to be curious about is this. This is the 3D printed bracket that held the mast against the shed, and it's been out there in the summer sun for a few months. Uh, a lot of people, when I did this, when I originally printed this, we're skeptical. Oh, you know, how UV safe is the plastic? How strong is it? That's going to break in a windstorm, yada, yada, yada. Um, I had actually run a video clip or two up on the Facebook page of the wind, seriously whipping that mast around when we had 30 to 40 mile an hour winds come through. Um, no, it never broke. Uh, and it's been out, like I said, in direct sun. I and mean, the sun hits that shed for half the day. So it's been in the direct sun for many months. And it's not really faded. For comparison, here is another piece that I printed for something else inside, and uh, as you can see, the uh, colors are really close. Um, there may be just a little bit of fading going on. This really doesn't show as well on camera because of the lighting angles. Uh, maybe there you can see it. See, like when the light hits this, this looks lighter than that. <laughs> there, they're about equal, but you can see it hasn't really faded. Um, and uh, it's Plenty strong. I can flex the heck out of it. There, it finally broke. I really had to pull on that to break it. That's about the tensile strength that I would expect from the PLA um, for that thickness as printed. Maybe just a touch more brittle? I don't know. But I really had to crank on that to break it. Uh, so yeah, it worked just fine um, for holding the backyard vertical up there. It probably would have lasted a year or two, maybe three, uh, just fine. So. That answers that bit of speculation. This is the box that's going to go on the back of the RV. And uh, inside I've got a 9 to 1 that feeds to these top two, right? So this will be the antenna connection for the uh, uh, antenna wire coming down off the mast. This will be counterpoiser ground, which is going to run down the length of the coach along the uh, aluminum rail that's there at the top and that should provide a, an adequate counterpoise for the vertical antenna when I've got it up. 9 to 1 in there I 3D printed a uh, terminal strip. The coaxes will come in through this hole which will go right to the coach wall and there's a cabinet on the other side there so I'll be able to snake the coax down the uh, back side of the cabinet. And then uh, down that wall and along that floor is the wiring channel which is already protected and uh, covered. And a friend of mine 
it's got a fish tape and we're going to fish the coax right down that the coax is because there'll be two right down that channel to the radio desk so that should work out just dandy and uh oh yeah and i printed a little snap on a little snap on cover for the terminal strip as well so i'll be able to cover it up <laughs> uh, and then the second coax will go to this so239 for external antenna projects and experiments so if i uh, want to try out a different antenna i'll have an external connection that i can hook up to it and just uh switch to it at the radio desk so that's my external antenna connection box well here's the second thing i've built today I've only got one thing left that i got to build before I can start packing up tools. But uh, this one is the file server. So I had a, a Dell tower that was acting as a file server with this one terabyte Western Digital Drive in it. And uh, uh, that's, you know, I don't want to use that on the road. Um, way too much power required to run a full tower computer. So I pulled the hard disk out. And this is the USB interface that I have here um, for hooking it up to the Raspberry Pi which is under this right right here and now what you really can't quite see maybe if I tilt it up a little I gotta be careful because we're just alligator clipped in right now for power because I'm testing Put more light on the subject I don't know if you can see it or not down here there's a 7805 voltage regulator and uh, it's tied right to this metal shell. Nice thing with the 7805s is that the tab, little metal tab on them, is ground. So you can tie them right to your chassis and use it as a heat sink. So that's what I'm doing here. This metal shell is a heat sink. And it might be just, yeah, I can just barely tell that there's any heat there at all. It's just hard, not even lukewarm to the touch. You know, you can just barely see a temperature difference. So that's going to work fine. The pie doesn't draw that much. Two to three hundred milliamps. Um, so yeah, the hard drive is spinning right now, although you can't hear it. That's why I'm being careful moving this. You don't want to move hard disks around while they're spinning. Uh, and this will not be in use when I'm driving. This will just be for archiving videos, and and I keep my media library and things on there. So I'll power this up when I need to pull that data or store data to it. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I got a one terabyte drive here. I got a Raspberry Pi running Raspbian. I've just set it up as a Samba server. Um, SMB Simple Message Block is the file sharing protocol that Microsoft developed with the earlier versions of Windows, uh, which has stuck around and is still quite popular today for doing uh, file servers. Uh, I soldered uh, wires onto the positive input on the Pi. It has a, this is a Raspberry Pi B, or 2B, I think. So it did not have built-in Wi-Fi. So I've got a, it's underneath this connector, but I've got a little 802.11 Wi-Fi module on there so I can use this wirelessly. Um, I will use some Ethernet cables, though, in the RV uh, just for some of the data stuff because backing up data to the server or backing its hard drive up to an external hard drive, um, I'll want more speed. And there's an Ethernet port on the Pi right down here. <laughs> Sorry for this terrible camera angle. Um, I'm just really kind of wiped out. I've just been working on stuff all day for this RV. But anyway, so that's the other thing I built today um, is the is the file server. Oh yeah, the hard drives mounted on rubber feet, um, just for its own vibration safety. <sighs> but uh, oh, power. Um, going this route. <laughs> 13.3 uh, volts. Um, the hard disk and the Raspberry Pi combined is drawing 680 milliamps right now. I saw it peak around 750 when the drive was spinning up. So less than an amp um, current draw to, to run the file server. So I'm keeping track of my power budget as I go. Um, you know, because I'm going to be doing a lot of this off of solar. And uh, you just got to watch, you know, how much you're drawing for how long. And this will be a thing that won't be on all the time. Um, I'll turn it on when I need to use it, you know, when I'm editing or something. And the rest of the time, it'll be off. So, there you go. So, uh, what else did I do? Uh, there's been some progress made on the desk slash workbench. Uh, John brought over the desktop, and we got that attached. Uh, and I filmed a little bit there to show you the, the uh, desk. There's going to be, on top of here, 
shelves and, and uh, cubbies. And they're going to come out as far as the front of this, so they'll be nice and deep for storage and plenty of depth for the radios and all that. And this, which is hinged here, will close up the front of those shelves where the radios and equipment are and have locks so it can lock to uh, protect the radios. Now this is the fancy part here. See these? They're hinged. They hinge out and that drops down and here's my desktop. So I'll sit here, have a chair and I can sit here and I can work. This will be my work surface and uh, these will be all the, the shelves and cubbies full of equipment and supplies and then when I'm done working and I want to secure everything I'll throw a piece of foam in front of the radios close that up and lock it and just hinge those in and look at that and then that will all be secured so that's the way the desk is going to work uh, the shelving units are being built now and then of course underneath here I got storage and these boards lift up I can put my batteries back under there for the solar and uh, I'll have to run a set of wires over to the house battery tray for the for another one. i got to have a battery over there because the short wires that go to the generator for its starter have to have high current so I need to have one battery outside unfortunately but I have to because that's uh, you know that's where the generator starting comes from and it needs that current. But I'm going to put the other two up under here uh, and yeah and that'll work out. Um, the shelving units up here on this side near the door, I'm going to have my power control and stuff up there, feed and power to all the equipment in here, and a lot of things to wire up. But uh, we're moving right along. John should have the shelves done by the end of this week, which will be getting down to about a week before a planned departure. I don't know if I'm going to make it by the end of this month. It might be a week or two into October. <laughs> I've still got so much to do. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd show you the desk. And finally, I'm sitting here in the kitchen on the laptop uh, using the webcam, and I apologize for the audio and video quality. Most of the video gear's already been put into totes, ready to be moved into the RV. Uh, my, well, I guess I could talk about it. My niece is moving into her first house and needed furniture and stuff, which was a perfect coincidence uh, in timing. And uh, she and my sister came up yesterday, and they took and bought most all the furniture in the house. All I really have left now is a, a Lazy Boy and uh, some scrappy tables. <laughs> Slept in the Lazy Boy last night. Uh, so yeah, that was a big day yesterday. And uh, I've removed probably 10 full bins of trash so far. And trash day is again tomorrow. I'm probably going to get another four bins out or five of stuff. Uh, really getting it pared down here, um, slowly but surely. And uh, I'm thinking that I'm going to be on schedule to roll out of here at the end of the month. Uh, I won't be hitting the open road right away, though. I'll be uh, probably doing a couple of trial runs locally, since I do have some support around here. I have a couple of friends with big driveways that have said if I needed to do some last-minute work, I could park in their driveway for a week uh, to continue working on the RV. So uh, I'll probably do a trial run uh, at one of the local camping areas to really test the systems out when I um, actually head out at the end of the month. Uh, plus I've got some mail uh, from the final utility bills and things that are going to be coming that I have to deal with. So for the first couple of weeks of October, uh, I should probably still be in this area, um, finishing up a few things and then uh, visiting the family and then heading south. Uh, so yeah, that's what's going on. Um, a lot of work yet to do. It seems like uh, as I make progress, there's just more to do. Um, but the major things are slowly getting knocked down. Getting the shelves installed um, will be nice. And uh, tomorrow, uh, my friend Rick, KD9HUM, is coming over with a fish tape. And I'm going to put the uh, antenna box that I showed you on the back of the RV and run the coaxes back as far as the uh, uh, radio desk. So we'll get that done so that uh, once the shelves are in, I'll be able to wire up or start wiring up equipment and um, maybe even test the antenna next week. Who's, who knows? We might be doing a live stream from the RV next week. Plugged into the house, but uh, we might try it. We'll see. I'll probably be sleeping in there, too. Uh, as I mentioned, my niece took all my furniture, including my bed. So I'm going to uh, 
go down uh, sometime this week and pick up a mattress and plop it in the back of the RV, make a bed, and probably start sleeping in there. <sighs> so, there you go. Sorry about the late update video. Uh, I hope to do next uh, the next one on Saturday, where it should be. And I uh, hope to have some really interesting stuff to show you, like the completed radio desk, and uh, who knows what else. We might have the roof sealed and painted by then and have the solar installed, too. That's a little ambitious, but uh, we're getting down to the wire. So, thanks for watching. I uh, am sorry about the poor video quality, audio quality. I, I'm just I'm so busy with everything else. I, I really can't spend two to three hours uh, working on a video. I have to have to kind of cut it short. So, we'll see you in a week. Seventy three. Take care. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.